This week in Steam Deck news, a massive SteamOS update hits the stable channel that brings huge changes to the desktop experience and how storage devices are handled. Plus, did Valve just silently kill their research into brain-computer interfaces? All of this and more in this week's Steam Deck news. So in the last Deck News video, we talked about how Nvidia is closing down their game stream service. The one that lets you stream games from your PC to another device like an Nvidia Shield on your home network. Well, I wanted to touch base on this again because a few uh, developments have happened since then. First, there's a change.org petition that aims to change Nvidia's mind on this. You'll find a link below in the uh, description. How effective will this petition be? That remains to be seen, uh, but I signed it anyway, just because it feels good to, to send a message like that through change.org. And second, and more importantly, this comment from my last video raised a very good point. Proman said, so the Nvidia bit, it's not actually legal. This sort of thing has been tested in court. Given they advertise that this is a feature of their products, them removing this from the sold products violates many laws, rather than them not supporting it in future products, which is allowed. Like, remember Linux for the PS3? When Sony removed that feature, they were sued by their customers, and I will add, their customers won. Therefore, there's already a precedent. Nvidia better hope that no one comes after them. I mean, I only bought one of their cards ages ago before I switched to Linux for this easy to use and pretty reliable, at least for me, service. The fact is I still use the same card, so I think more than a few people are feeling the same way as I am. Now, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. If you are an Nvidia customer and there was a class action lawsuit brought against Nvidia for removing this feature, would you sign your name to it? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. Now, before we continue, I want to take a second and thank this video sponsor, Micro Center. Micro Center is one of the largest consumer retailers in the US. So whether you're nice and get your holiday shopping done on time or naughty and waited until the very last minute, Micro Center still has you covered with their holiday savings. Their online PC builder can help you select parts for your new PC and let you hit the ground running within 18 minutes of placing your purchase with in-store pickup. Micro Center has over 30,000 products in stock and there's something for everyone. Students, IT managers, and gamers alike trust Micro Center for their computer and electronic needs. Micro Center has some of the lowest prices, whether you're shopping online or in store. That means that if you're not shopping at Micro Center, you're missing out on saving money. And new deals and coupons are constantly being rolled out. And Micro Center takes pride in their repair and diagnostic service at all 25 of their locations. They work with you to help you understand the problem and all your options to resolve it. Whether it's a screen replacement, GPU issues, poor thermal performance, you name it, they can fix it. And their knowledge bar is staffed with unmatched levels of expertise. Their technicians are OEM and A-plus certified and can help you with your PC or Apple machine. So be sure to shop Micro Center's holiday savings with the link below. And if you build a PC this holiday, you can share your new rig over on Micro Center's Build Showcase. There's links below to both of those. Shopping with Micro Center supports the channel. Thank you to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. And now back to it. Now, in case you missed it, and it seems many of you did, I released a special holiday video that I made with my girlfriend. The video is really fun and the comments have been overwhelmingly positive. So if you haven't watched it yet, take a second and check it out. It's really cute and Emily and I had a blast making it. She wrote the script too, so give her a shout out in the comments. Plus the details on how to enter our Steam Deck giveaway are in that video, so make sure you don't miss it. Now, I saw an interesting headline the other day. The title of the PC gaming article was Square Enix was the surprise Steam Deck champion of the year. But honestly, I disagree. It wasn't a surprise to me that Square Enix showed the Steam Deck lots of love. And do you know why? It's because they've always been fairly keen on Linux. They were pretty chummy with Feral Interactive back in the day. They brought Deus Ex Mankind Divided, uh, the Tomb Raider franchise, and many of their other games with native Linux ports. They've done this for forever. To me, I think the most surprising Steam Deck support has got to be from PlayStation. The fact that PlayStation has brought so many of their titles to PC has been fun to see in and of itself, but to see PlayStation executives excitedly tweeting about their PC ports coming to Steam Deck and getting verified, that is surprising. Now, I'd love to get your uh, input on this. What developers or publishers were you most surprised with their support for Steam Deck? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? When you do, you're well on your way to seeing more videos just like this one. Next up, Tyler McVicker says that Valve employees Mike Gambinder, Steve Noonan, Jeff Reitman, and Dario Casali have all departed the company. Now, this is according to Valve's official website. According to McVicker, Dario Casali is one of the last few remaining uh, employees from the formation of the company. Given his tenure with the company, this would be notable on its own. But Mike Gambinder is, 
Again, according to Tyler McVicker, the only Valve employee to have ever given a public speech on Valve's research into brain-computer interfaces. What does all this mean for the future of Valve? We don't know. We know Gabe Newell has been very interested in the idea of brain-computer interfaces for a very long time, but at this point, anything more is going to be speculation. If you want to see what Tyler McVicker has to say, there's a link in the description. Okay, next up, uh, the last huge news of the week, just in time for Christmas, Valve dropped a brand new stable Steam Deck OS update, version 3.4. It comes with one of the largest change logs in recent memory. So let's go over the release notes and see exactly what's new, what's awesome, and what we can expect here. First, SteamOS has been rebased on a new version of Arch Linux. This is great as it pulls in the latest performance, security, and stability fixes that are foundational to SteamOS. The most notable changes, according to their announcement post, are to desktop mode. KDE Plasma, the Steam Deck's desktop environment, includes a new overview mode to see all open windows in virtual desktops. There's also updates to KRunner, new touchscreen gestures, new themes and wallpapers, and updates to widgets. This change alone leapfrogs desktop mode several stable versions forward and introduces new features that other Linux users have been waiting for for a dog's age on the deck. It's great to see. Then there are the performance profiles. So there's now a new option which allows screen tearing while playing a game. This allows the deck to display partial frames on the screen resulting in a tearing effect in the image. This provides lower average latency when VSync is disabled and the frame limiter is off. And the performance HUD level 2 was changed to use a horizontal layout which now fits in the letterbox space for games running in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Storage saw several large updates with this release. Trim was enabled for the internal drive, as well as certain external storage devices, which overall improve write performance. This will allow Steam to periodically trim the storage devices as needed, and a new setting is available in Settings, System, Advanced, that will allow you to run the trim service immediately. But what is trim? Well, to put it simply, it lets the operating system tell the SSD what data has been deleted and is safe to ignore. This is important since the file system is usually what controls which files have been deleted and not the SSD. Without trim, the SSD is completely left in the dark about which data is deleted and which data is still legitimate data, and it will write blocks of data unnecessarily. Enabling trim speeds up your SSD write speeds tremendously. And it's awesome to see that they've brought that to the stable SteamOS update. There's also now an eject button for removable drives. This unmounts the drive from the file system, allowing you to safely eject your SD card or detach the USB cable without any risk of data loss. Another huge feature that I've been waiting for for a super long time on the Steam Deck is that external drives formatted as an EXT4 Linux file system are now automatically mounted. This means that you can now install and play games from USB drives as long as they're properly formatted. Next, there's a small update with input as well. First, the DualShock 4 and DualSense, the PlayStation 5 controller, have their trackpad mouse emulation disabled when Steam is running. This change prevents accidentally moving a cursor or activating a mouse click with the trackpad. Though, I would like to see an option to enable this on a system-wide level for these controllers in the settings. There were also other small fixes to the virtual keyboard and Steam input meant to increase compatibility with certain games and devices, including the 8-bit Doe Ultimate Wireless Controller dongle and the Hori Fighting Stick Alpha. Lastly, several general fixes were introduced into this release as well. For example, they fixed an issue with sleep affecting a small number of titles that would be frozen or glitched after waking. They also added fixes for the backlight sensor, which could cause games to hitch during gameplay. They added specific fixes for Death Stranding, fixes for an issue with fan controllers being pulled excessively and causing sporadic issues, and new docking station firmware, which resolves an issue with HDMI 2.0 displays not being detected during boot and wake. There are also some fixes for audio on the device as well. But after the initial release of this new Steam Deck OS, uh, there were two hotfixes issued. The first was to address a regression with how SD cards were handled. Valve's Pierre-Lou Griffet said, quote, We've seen the feedback on the 3.4 SD card mount path breaking pre-existing non-Steam shortcuts. We'll roll back the change to USB auto mounting from 3.4 and defer it until 3.5 in the new year to give software some time to adjust to the new standard path. The other hotfix was to address an issue with the HDMI and DisplayPort audio going to sleep on external displays. There was some buzz in the community saying that 3.4 had some breaking changes and not to upgrade, but after these hotfixes, it's definitely safe to upgrade. 
That's it for Steam Deck news this week and just in time for Christmas. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. I want to thank my generous patrons and my YouTube members. It's because of folks like them I've been able to grow the show into what it's become today. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can become a Steam Deck warrior by pledging your monthly support with the links below. And thanks. That's going to do it for now, though. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time.